Welcome back to Crosswalk.com's Inside the Editor's Room podcast. This is episode 9.5, one of our half episodes where we discuss a single topic uh, that uh, is of interest to folks in our space with Christian worldview and, uh, and interests. Uh, I'm joined today by Kelly Givens, our editor of iBelieve.com, and Rachel Dawson, our design editor, and I'm Sean McAvoy, the managing editor of Crosswalk.com. Stephen McGarvey is uh, away on vacation this week, and we miss him dearly, but uh, we're going to talk, talk about a topic today that is kind of near and dear to our hearts, and that is some some DIY stuff, some of the, uh, the do-it-yourself and the home improvement shows and all the stuff on the HGTV, including everyone's, <clears throat> except mine, favorite, Chip and JoJo <laughs> from <laughs> Fixer Upper, um, and just all things related to... Uh, to this somewhat phenomenon of, of television right now and what it's done for, for home improvement and, and even uh, us in, in our worlds as we try to arrange our homes. So uh, let's, let's start with you, Kelly. Um, what have you seen as some, uh, maybe some pros and cons of, of both these, these types of shows? And really just tell us, what do you love about them? Yeah, so I think that these shows are like my... Um, like chicken noodle soup. I I take Comfort in these food. shows when I'm not feeling well. Like if I don't, if I have a cold or just having a crummy day, I just flip on HGTV and watch whatever's on. And um, just I don't know. It's just very mindless. I mean, it's the same sort of format no matter what the show is. It's like a young couple or whatever going into an area wants a home, and then they show them the home, they redo it, and then it's like oh, everyone gets to be excited and happy about this beautiful new place. And so I feel like I just enjoy letting my mind kind of go like blank and watching these things. So I just enjoy them from a mere like oh, entertainment perspective. Sounds like a con- kind of a, a commonplace thing these days that a lot of people do that. Rachel, do you ever find yourself gravitating towards these at all? Or I mean, I are you more not. of a property brothers or a fixer upper <laughs> type of type of gal? I Beach do not watch any of them. <laughs> no. None, none. I don't have cable um, and I've shied away from trying to find other ways to watch a lot of shows. So I, I notice you still find ways yeah. to find Shark Week. Though. I know. <laughs> I love Shark Week. Um, that is an, yeah, that's an exception. What if the sharks came into the house and what totally sharks redecorated? Remodeled? Sharks were there a remodel of shark. I mean, yeah, I would be into that. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm Captain not. Captain Quint style. <laughs> yeah, there, Jaws yeah. on the wall. Um, maybe it's because I'm not a homeowner and I don't have a permanent place to live, but there's not a lot of draw to the, those types of shows um, for the me. The homeless generally don't watch the home improvement. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm going to do, I do have a place where I live um, and I do enjoy enjoy decorating it. Um, 98% of what is in our home with my roommate is mine. And I like (laughs) doing that. Um, But I don't, I don't know, I'm not really drawn to like watching other people's homes get revamped. Um, I think the formula like you were talking about that can be comforting to some people is boring to me in a lot of ways of like, I pretty much know what to expect um, in the arc of this plot line in this show. And I just, I don't know, it's not really a thing that well, let me ask you this. Attention. It's a little bit off topic, but sure. it, it's something that you, I, you, uh, you mentioned that brought something to mind for me when, um, when I, back when I was your age, um, <laughs> I was, I, I think I probably rearranged my apartment once a month. Uh-huh. It, do you find yourself doing that? Do you I redecorate do. on your own? Yeah, yeah. I actually recently just like moved every single piece of furniture <laughs> in my room. And that's, I mean, my bedroom is not that big and there's not that many places everything can go, but it was fun. It was fun to just kind of mix it up and try something new and, I enjoy redoing what's on the mantle and putting new things out different places. And my roommate, I think, kind of thinks it's a little silly and crazy sometimes. Like, it's fine. Like, it's good as it is. But there's some <laughs> draw to kind of just spicing up the environment and shifting things around. I agree. Feel I, like you find inspiration for, like, Pinterest or Instagram or, like, where do you get the, like, yeah. drive to redo things? Um, I guess more Instagram than anything. <laughs> um, I'm also not a big Pinterest user because I feel like it's just, I could get lost on the rabbit hole and it's just something that, like, I have enough, <laughs> I get yeah. sucked into things easily enough that Pinterest is a, the same <laughs> kind of, like, not a huge draw for me. But, yeah, I mean, I follow different design bloggers and things, mm-hmm. too, and there's things that will, you know, spark an idea. And I'm like, oh, I bet I could try that. But I have a pretty minimalistic approach in a lot of the ways that I decorate, so I don't really like a lot of clutter or lots of different things around, and I don't go all out for holidays and seasonal decorations and things. I kind of keep it simple, but then it's nice to kind of shift things just for a change of pace and feeling like things feel new again when you just have moved stuff around, but... Because I think there's a psychology to it, and I think that's something 
that maybe these shows try to tap into a little bit when someone may be out of ideas, but they just need something new around themselves, mm-hmm. kind of this, I don't know, this feng shui type of thing mm-hmm. where it's it's going to make you feel differently about your space and then about your own internal space. So, yeah. um, But I go way further back with these. Uh, I, I can remember trading spaces yes. and my wife and I watching marathons <laughs> of that show. And even Crying further back him. to like Bob Vila with this old house <laughs> yes. way, way back in the day. Yes. So um, they've been around for a while, but there certainly is an influx of them right now. Would you... Kelly, describe yourself as more like a, a property brothers type <laughs> person, or um, yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know if I have a particular affection for any of them in particular. I just enjoy. You like the happy couples getting their new space. I just though. like to see what they do on like the construction side of things, like how they take a space that where I couldn't even imagine the remodeling, and then they just turn it into this like brand new place Mm -hmm. where like, oh, I never would have pictured like taking out that wall and adding that in and all of a sudden it becomes this like really functional thing. So I do love Property Brothers, think they're great. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy like hate watching the (laughs) ones where they're like lake house hunting or beachfront hunting or like their third home. Or all the houses are 800,000 and over. Yes, and then they walk in and... budget is $2 million. $2 million. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then they walk in like, I don't know, the paint color's a little off. And you're like, no, it's just paint. Like that can't be a factor. Right. (laughs) That can't be the thing that keeps you from this home. Um, So yeah, I do love what you said though, Sean, about just like the psychology of it. I think that there's probably a reason that bookstores have like such huge like self-help and like self-improvement and revamping. And I think that that's one of those things that these kind of shows touch on is just like we all want like refreshment and renewal in our lives. And I think that that is kind of what those shows are tapping into, this idea of like taking something that feels like it needs a an update and giving it a fresh face and a fresh start, and I think that's kind of what people like look at them too and think, oh, like I can, if that if I redo this thing in my life, then maybe like I'll feel more positive and I'll feel like refreshed and renewed. So I kind of think there is a little bit of a correlation there. But you know, it's it's interesting to me that you guys mentioned um, Pinterest or into Instagram or other places to get ideas, uh, because the other side of these shows, aside from the redecorating. Is, and you mentioned a little bit, Kelly, is the rebuilding part of it. And that has always been a thing that for me, less on the decorating side, but more on this side has been like a, a, uh, comparison, like, oh, I don't mm-hmm. measure up. Like I am convinced I miss school. The one day they taught every other man there how to <laughs> add a room onto your house. Yeah. <laughs> and if I did that, it would like have Legos underneath popping up for different levels. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. yeah. So, uh, it's fun to see people who know how to do these mm-hmm. things, and it does give you some ideas. And, you know, DIY has come so far just from just the Internet and people being able to, you know, yeah. Google up a, or YouTube up a video on, uh, I installed a toilet of mine about two years ago, and I, I, totally I, I celebrated for about a month because, <laughs> so ah, look at what I have you done. Did this. Like, Dumb Hanks and Castaway, I have made fire. <laughs> yes. Flushing is now possible. This is my question with these shows. I feel like, do people watch them as a way of like, oh, let them do the hard work and they'll handle all the stress. And like, we watch it as like an entertainment thing of watching other people go through that whole process and feeling like, do we ourselves feel satisfaction? Because like, oh, look what they did. Or is it like, I don't know, for you guys who watch these shows and have homes, does that, do shows like this motivate you to do those things in your own home? Or are you satisfied to just watch it happen for other people and let that yes. be the feel good? <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say yes. So it's interesting when Both. I look at, um, when I look at those TV shows, I don't really place myself in them. I okay. do kind of feel like this is a rich person's world who has like a $2 million <laughs> yeah. budget. Mm-hmm. But I think the part where comparison creeps in is, with Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest, you, like, I remember I got married before Pinterest was a thing. And then afterward, like, it seemed like everyone had these, like, Pinterest perfect mm-hmm. weddings. And I was like, where was that when I was getting married and, like, could could have DIY'd everything, you know, about the wedding. And I think I see that in my home. There's this, this, like, um, motif now of, like, bright white shiplap. We talk about that a lot, <laughs> Sean, of, like, everything is in shiplap and bright white and, like, um, succulents are everywhere and there's like, I don't know, just these airy open spaces. And I look at my home and I'm like, that's not how my home looks. And so there becomes this like pressure to yeah. conform to this like general style of, um, what is beautiful in your home. And I think that's where like self-consciousness creeps in for mm-hmm. me. And it makes me feel like, oh, well, I haven't 
like we just bought our home and we're kind of like doing a little bit of painting and refurbishing mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, it's not ready. To, and no one can see it yet. It's not ready. It's not yeah. ours yet. It's theirs. And I have to like paint all the walls and make it my own. But then it's like, okay, well, what is that going to look like? How long is that going to take? So mm-hmm. not yeah. realistic expectations. We used to watch them just for fun. But since mm-hmm. we've been doing a remodel since about December, uh, we've been watching these shows a lot more and getting a lot of ideas from them. And um, it's kind of ridiculous right now. Uh, our, most of our, our walls are primed after getting some, some new floors throughout the house because Valerie wants to try something. Um, I, I painted all these rooms about five years ago, uh, mm-hmm. and I told her, don't pick something that's going to go out of style in about five years. Of course, she's no longer happy, and uh-huh. um, everyone's into gray right now. We yeah. have the... Uh, my wife is into 30 shades of gray. Uh-huh. I, I call it. <laughs> not, not a questionable novel, but, but the smatterings that are on my, that yes. are on the wall of my kitchen. Yes. So uh-huh. I, I never knew there were so many or that they look so different in, in different lights, but, uh, yeah. that's, that's where we're at right now. So every time we watch one of these shows, there's a lot of side eyes and, mm-hmm. and cutting glances and, and, mm-hmm. uh, look at what you're putting me through. <laughs> I know. Um, but it's, it's fun too, and it, it definitely has given us some ideas of where we wanted to go with things. And um, what I miss, though, is I miss the days of, of trading spaces and and um, feeling just so bad for a couple who has to walk back into their house and fake that they like it when there's grass on the wall or something like that. <laughs> and the designer has totally ignored their wishes. Yeah. Uh, you, there needs to be a TV in here. No, no, they always get rid of the TV. So. Yeah. Um, and they were, I think, part of that show. The funniness of it was they intentionally, like, kind of made things outlandish because mm-hmm. they were. I mean, it was kind of the what are they going to do in the house? And mm-hmm. oh yeah, seeing some of those reactions, it was, it was kind of hard to watch people kind of fall apart when they walked in. <laughs> but today's big show that especially folks in our space like, and you can understand why because the the couple are outspoken Christians is uh, is fixer upper. Mm-hmm. And I, at times, famously around here, feel like the <laughs> the only Christian who isn't uh, so into Chip and JoJo for various reasons. And I and I, I don't understand why her style is better than anyone else's. But uh, is this? I mean, so tell us, Kelly, why do you love them? This is so funny. I think that um, like I've never watched an episode in real time. Like so, this isn't. I'm not like their ardent, like an ardent, like biggest fan. But I do like find them just so entertaining and fun. Um, I I don't know if there's like a reason that I love them or the show. I just think it's fun. I don't know. I don't have like a deep theology of why <laughs> Fixer Upper is like an enjoyable thing for me. Because my kids totally outed me when my in-laws were here, uh-huh. who are for, also from Texas and, and do watch the show regularly. Yeah. And are, yeah, my dad doesn't like them. Oh, oh. kids. So why, dad? <laughs> All right, you really want to know. I don't think her designs are original or she's all that great, and I don't think Chip is funny. And I got the uh, – my in-laws are never disapproving of me, but the the, <laughs> the, the, the the hands got crossed and the shoulders got hunched up, and, the, well, I can't agree with that. <laughs> so so I, I was just going to say I never tell people this, but guess what I just did? Uh, we're on a podcast now, so so, uh, so send your letters to Sean yes. Magma. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I think that, um, you know, I'm interested to see. It's one of those things where I think in the Christian space, they've gained a lot of traction because they're Christians. Mm -hmm. And because this is a a fun design show and people are into design shows. So it's kind of this mix of everyone loves a good design show. And then here are these Mm -hmm. Christians that are doing it well in a space that often Christians just don't do things well. Like Mm -hmm. in in a secular space, they've kind of in HGTV HGTV land, they've come in and they've created a thing that has done really well. My interest will be what happens in a year or two when, you know, Chip and Johanna have something to say about gay marriage mm. or, you know, an issue that, an isn't issue popular. that is, isn't popular. You know, are they, I feel like we're just, I'm kind of waiting for the fallout, honestly. Well, there was already the fallout when they're, they, when people realized, hey, they go to a church with a pastor who believes in the biblical definition of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I yeah. think that. It's interesting. I do think that Christians sometimes cling to um, celebrity Christians for just for the sake of like having something to cling to in the culture because they just don't have any of those things to cling to. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how how long they last. But well, let's shift gears for a little bit here. I, I want to talk to you about another issue you brought up uh, when we were talking about this yesterday, Kelly, and that is whether these these shows tend to. Um, 
tend to promote in some way almost a gentrification mm-hmm. of society and, and uh, you know, fixing the the uh, the worst house in the best neighborhood type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, do, it, it doesn't feel that way when I watch them, but is there anything more sinister going on under the surface here? Yeah, I know. I read a really interesting article um, in Country Living. It was called What That Fixer Upper Car Crash Has to Say About Waco and Your Favorite HGTV Show. And we can link to that in the show notes. But basically what happened was um, one of the homes that Chip and Johanna um, redid, a drunk driver crashed into the house and, you know, they had to have a lot of remodeling done on it. And then the owners of that home ended up doing a couple interviews on the local news um, outlets and talked about, I guess it came out that, you know, some of the locals around had been complaining about, you know, their celebrity in the area and how that has like, possibly driven up the cost of homes in that area and what does that do to the people that already live there who aren't you know these people who are let's face it most of these people are like white upper class people coming into these areas that the homes aren't wonderful but then they fix these homes up and now what does that do to the communities that they live in and so it's kind of brought up this um like kind of a larger topic like we said of gentrification in Waco and there's been a lot of criticism too with the big magnolia market that's been put in Waco. Um, Some of the local Waco, I think there's like a, you know, a lot of people there that would say it's become a really big hassle for the town in Mm -hmm. general to, as these, as people flock to this like mecca of home improvement. Yeah. um, It's rare because most other shows aren't centered in a town. Right. Right. Exactly. Like most of the, most of these, like they're going from place to place throughout the country. And so it's an interesting thing. I wish that we had someone, one of our audience members who lived in Waco who could talk to us about it because I would love to know um, from their perspective how intrusive this has been or, you know, I think that they can probably on the one hand be glad for the economy that or the money that it brings in, but I think also probably it's like mm-hmm. disruptive of like traffic and I don't know. I just went on a road trip with a friend who was from Waco and she mm-hmm. went to school there and went to Baylor and was talking a lot about that, that she was saying exactly what you were saying, that it, like, it has totally changed the town and mm-hmm. there wasn't much there now and, or wasn't much there a few years ago and now it's this booming area where she's like, it's changed everything and people come there just for that and it's kind of like, there's a sense of like, we were a good town before this and like, mm-hmm. there are more people here than just this one couple and this one family and, yeah. but there is sort of a sense of pride too of like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this is from Waco, this is our hometown and, she kind of talks a lot about, I think, living in some of that tension of like, yeah, yeah. there are some good things and some bad things. And I think any big thing that blows up like that in a certain town or city does change things for the mm-hmm. worse or the better. Um, I know, like, I studied abroad in London one summer when the Olympics were there. And it was mm-hmm. one of those, like, the British people were both very excited that it was coming to their town mm-hmm. and also very, like, this really hurts the economy in a lot of ways and it really adds traffic and it really does this and all these negative things. And then the repercussions of that don't go away Mm -hmm. even after like the Olympics are over and a show like this that keeps going, Mm -hmm. will that continue for longer? And I don't know. It is an interesting Mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Do you guys know of any shows? Uh, I, the only one I can think of is, is when, uh, extreme makeover home Mm -hmm. edition used to be on that, that Mm -hmm. sometimes focus on, on more lower income areas or, or people with greater needs Um, or volunteerism or anything like that? Yeah, I know that one of the critiques of Extreme Home Makeover, though, was that Mm -hmm. they were helping out these poor people, but then they couldn't pay the mortgages on these crazy Mm -hmm. trips. Suddenly upgraded a more value house. (laughs) It felt like a band-aid on a bigger Mm -hmm. issue with a lot of those shows in the past. Right. Yeah, I don't know if they're not – I mean, obviously, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of these things, but the ones that I have seen, I don't know that many focus on. Mm Mm-hmm the yeah. more, like, charitable side of what this could be. Would mm-hmm. people even watch? watch. I mean, yeah, I do, are we going to watch Jimmy Carter go in with Habitat for Humanity and build yeah. some houses when there, there's nothing relevant to ourselves of, oh, yeah, I can use that in, in my $200,000 house. Right, right. Um, I wonder, too, if some of the appeal is that, like, oh, they have a $10 million budget. Like, that. there's some mm-hmm. kind of, like, ooh, let me see what they could do with that. There's no limits, and that's fun to watch. That's more fun to watch than a show where, like, we have thirty thousand dollars, and yeah. we have to cut costs, and we can't do the cool things. So why is that? that? Why is it a keeping up with the Joneses thing? Oh, I'm going to aspire to be that family that can afford that house. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's like watch my social betters type of thing. It's like our uh, fascination with celebrity. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it is interesting to think about the measures of success that I think these shows kind of display. Of um, you have to get to a certain point in your life and your career where you can 
afford to, you know, take a house and then flip it and make it this better mm-hmm. thing. And I think we just look at our homes. I mean, I, I know I do as symbols, symbols of like, what does this say about me as a person? And yeah. I was thinking about that too with D, in DC when I lived there. It was like people, homes were just so expensive that it really wasn't the homes, it was cars. Like it was, the, mm. well, people are commuting all the time. So the status symbol in DC is a car and what kind of car do you drive? And, and you pull into a parking in lot. And yeah, very different you in New York. You don't have a car. So what is it? Is it fashion? Is it something else? And in like Lake Tahoe, I've had friends who've lived there and in Colorado, like it's your, um, what are you doing on your weekends? Like your sports, your sporting things. Like, yeah. It's just so it kind of depending on where you yeah. live is this like, where do you put neighborhood, your status? car, vacation activities, mm-hmm. um, home? That's, yeah. that's really interesting Be- because to me, it would seem like one of the, just in my heart, one of the most interesting and uplifting things I could watch <clears throat> is someone, someone struggling for a long time and finally getting a home and a place mm-hmm. to call their own. Mm-hmm. But that's not, but that's not good television necessarily. Right. So, uh, I, yeah, I think that it's these a disconnect shows- for me. They don't see, I mean, yeah, you can't hand out that to people, I think, and not recognize that it's just more complicated than building a dream home for someone or even like, what does that look like then in the surrounding community that you're going to do that in? How does that impact the immediate neighborhood? And I do think that that's an interesting thing as Christians to be thinking about, even in our own lives of where are we going to, like, where are we living in community and how do we live? And does that, you know, help the community that we're a part of? Mm -hmm. Um, And thinking about that, even in Richmond, there's pockets of like deep, deep wealth. And then you go 15 miles in the other direction. It's just deep, deep poverty. And what are we doing? Um, Are there ways that even just in our city that we can be like working together to kind of bridge those gaps? I don't know. And do you think, Rachel, that Mm -hmm. do it yourself and home improvement and when we do those types of things, that they can spark any kind of feeling within ourselves for what we can do within and not just external for improving ourselves for really kind of becoming a different person? Is there anything metaphorical and useful in that analogy? Yeah, I think there can be. I think it takes a certain kind of, I guess, self-awareness to be able to realize, I don't know, just the ways that we, I think, tend to use these things as maybe a way of escaping the real work that we need to be doing. And Mm -hmm. like, oh, but if my home looks this way and is all put together, then I can pretend like I've got it all together. And I think it takes maybe a certain level of maturity and depth to realize like some of those things are just a blanket on the deeper issues. And can we look at the draw that we feel towards those types of shows and that kind of arc of a mess being revamped and being made new and apply that in our lives in a way that actually does make a lasting impact and not just a superficial material one. I think it can be done and it'd be cool to see more people apply the kinds of things that we want about those shows into our own lives. Yeah, to consider making a home for Christ in our hearts the way we want to make a home for our neighbors to come into ours. That brings us to the end of our show. Thank you to Kelly and Sean for sharing your thoughts. Um, follow us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crosswalk podcast to share some of your feedback. We would love to hear what you guys love about these shows, which ones are your favorites and just your general thoughts about home improvement in general. Thanks to Steven Sanders and Kyle Fletcher, our audio engineers to find out more on the topics we talked about today, or to listen to any of the episodes we've done in the past. You can find us at inside the editors room.com and also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or anywhere else you listen to podcasts to get all of our episodes right to your phone. Thanks for listening.